for a country that claims to take pride in its culture, religions and spirituality, India has found itself in an awkward situation. While on one hand, goddesses are worshipped, on the other, Indian women live in fear of physical and mental abuse. We are a hypocritical country, all this nonsense about Indians worship women, it's all bullshit. It's crap, I mean it doesn't exist, I mean we've just built these myths in our head. I mean, we are a deeply hypocritical country which doesn't want to face up to anything. We have given preferences to men. All spaces in India are masculine spaces. It's the way we all grew up. In India has grown up very conservatively patriarchal. To an extent, very few people. And one of the biggest things, the maximum thing it did over the years was the control of a woman. Violence happens as a... As a, as a extreme disciplining measure, if you please, or a measure to impose uh, discipline through fear on all women. So it's a patriarchal punishment in a way for women. It's a patriarchal reminder that you are women. It takes several different forms. It ranges from just the regular kind of leer that you face every day, just looks to comments to jostling and to far more violent crimes. I also feel that in various streets, women are not safe. They're not safe. My family is quite worried because we're two girls traveling. You're told to dress a certain way, watch what you say, don't go out at night alone. It's very different to where we come from in Sydney, in Australia, because it's really safe for a girl to be alone at night, late time. at night. Yeah. I've never felt unsafe in Sydney. But, and even today, when we were walking inside, there was just big groups of men sometimes walking around and trying to take Taking photos. Taking photos of us and trying to talk to us. We don't just feel uncomfortable. Catcalling and groping are a shameful part and parcel of life on Delhi streets. On the evening of December 16th, however, the same streets became the scene of a graver crime. The horrifying gang rape of a 23-year-old girl, sparking countrywide protests and causing a rude awakening to the conscience of a nation. I think, sir, we need to, this is a very good opportunity for us. It's sad that I'm calling it an opportunity, but this is a very good time for us to make it an example and show to the country that you mean business. The Delhi gang rape case is more like a catalyst, which has uh, catapulted the collective conscience of the nation to doing some cogent, concrete action. Earlier, rape cases were happening all the time but they never really took the conscience of the nation. This was one particular case that demonstrated that we had barbaric animals within our own population. Barbaric animals who spare no one. This six-year-old girl was at home when a man from the neighborhood kidnapped and raped her. I was taken to the child. I was taken to the child. I was taken to the hospital. This is the doctor. I was taken to the child. 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 मैंने फिर पुलिस वाले को हमारा नंबर तो है नहीं गली वाले ने फोन किया पुलिस वाले आए फिर इसको मैं ले गया बस पुलिस चौकी वहाँ पे एक दिन जोड़ा खच रहे हैं उसका बाद जाके छः बजे जाके छः सात बजे जाके वो कंप्लेंट लिख रहे हैं फिर उसका बाद वहाँ बैठे रहते रहते बोले कि हॉस्पिटल ले चलो but as she grows up to the bitter realization, one wonders whether the mental trauma would ever really fade away. A lot of times people say, oh, this is a stray incident. The point is, it's not a stray incident. It's happening every day with relentless brutality again and again and again and again in this country. It's not a stray incident. <laughs> हमें बुला के और आपके लिए कोई और लड़के बुला के और आपका बुरे हाल करवाएं कि जैसे इज्जत आबरी कुछ करवाएं खाना फिर खाना फिर जो लड़की कहती है हम अपने घर कहेंगे जाके कि अब किसी साउथ से कहेंगे कि उसको बिल्कुल मार डाला मार के और उसमें बोरी में बंद करके ना अब वो डांट दिया अब आपने लगा दी चीज़ 
This mother grieves for her daughter Manisha, who was killed by her in-laws for being unable to bear a child. अब मेरी लड़की का बच्चे नहीं हुए तो मेरे मेरी लड़की का क्या कसूर? अब मेरे पास भेज देते, मारते मारते मेरे पास भेज देते, इलाज करवाते, मेरे पास खबर करते, हर एक तरह से अत्याचार भी हुआ और विश्वास गार्ड भी किया उन्होंने हमारे साथ। लेकिन हमारी लड़की ने कभी नहीं किया। और हमारी लड़की इतनी शैनशीलता अब तेरा साल हो जाएंगे जी कल। और ये और कहते हैं कि हम तो अब भी ताने मारते हैं ना हम तो जेल में बैठे हैं तीन दिन से पचास लाख रुपए ले लो और रात ही ना मार लो अरे तुम ले लो हम चेक कर जा कर के ले जाएं हम घर बेच कर दे बता दे हमारी लड़की ने लड़की दे दो हमारी लड़की दे दो क्या लड़की की क्या पैसों से पुराना जोड़ी जाती है जिसे इंसान के अब पूरा गांव ठीक नहीं कह रहा हमारे सामने नहीं कह रहा पीछे से फोन कर कर के कह रहे हैं कि इन ये बदमाश थी बलानी थी औरत इसने पहले आपने क्यों नहीं सोचा आपकी लड़की इतनी सीख दी है हमारी लड़की सीख दी थी हमने हीरा दिया तो हीरे की कदर तुमने क्यों नहीं करी हमें बड़ी लिखी कोई हमारी लड़की में रुक शोधता तो हमें बुलाते हैं हमारे पास फोन लगाया हम अपने को घर लेके आते हैं मैं तो जहाँ तक है कोशिश लड़ूंगा माँ बाप की ये है कि लड़की जाएं तो कम से कम जितने एक कान की है जितने एक लड़की उसको सजा तो मिलनी चाहिए समाज में कल तो वो दूसरी साथ जाए तो क for want of dowry has gone scot-free. They get the money. They need the money. They don't have 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 the money. They have to buy the money. They have to buy the money. I have to buy the money. That's why they get the money. That's why they get the money. That's why they get the money. I have personally researched in Mumbai hospitals wherein they have been given what boys who refuse to be named but who have told me that yes, people still ask us and how we tell them while we are handing over the USG report we tell them Laddu khila dena which means you are having a boy or Peda khila dena which means you are having a girl then go forward with it, fake an illness, get your abortion done in Delhi that's a step ahead over there once you open the report and if you have paid money you will find a little blue stick on or a pink stick on which will actually show you what you want so there have been differences earlier I have seen victims who carried photographs of their adopted aborted fetus because their mother-in-law wanted a proof so that they could let them inside the house question the mantras which the pandit gives you and it says putra ho putra ho hold his hand saying no 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 putra ho ya putri ho nahi santan ho santan ho every prayer of ours is saying wish you be a mother of a son saying no wish me to be a, a mother of a healthy child girl or boy see you need to question the pandit at that time you need to question your prayers you need to question your customs and rights actually presenting a paper on my findings on marital rape and comparing it with the british and the uk system and saying why shouldn't india also have it yes there are issues like the circumstantial evidence not getting into the legality what really shocked me was a sitting judge who was actually over there where I was presenting heard me, smiled very sweetly and then later after my presentation was over said beta very good research but it's only after you get married will you realize that pati ka pi koi hak hota hai I was shocked that if these are the people who are sitting and on the chairs which we worship as the judiciary as the epitome of a position that will actually deliver us justice then what are we looking forward to? This is the primitive mindset which we are working against and looking for justice but then this is the primitive mindset that is sitting over there and delivering justice. Justice Lahoti was of the opinion that reducing the age of consent for marriage would decrease the occurrence of crimes against women. He expressed his view against sex education and dating before the marriageable age. I am a firm believer of Indian culture. Indian culture and the way of life in which the Indian society had been living and is in my opinion supposed to live. Many problems and many issues of modern day would not have emerged in India if 
we would have described to our own cultural values. मनीषा की हत्या इसलिए की गई क्योंकि उसकी जो परिवार वाले थे वो उसके ससुराल वालों का जो इच्छा थी दहेज की वो पूरी नहीं कर पाई क्योंकि एक तो उसकी कोई संतान नहीं हुई क्योंकि हरियाणा के अंदर एक कल्चर है कि जब संतान होती है तो जो लड़की के जो पेरेंट्स हैं वो इतना टूट जाते हैं कि उनको जो लड़की के ससुराल वाले हैं उनको इतना देना पड़ता है बच्चा होने पर एक छुच्छा के नाम पे कि मतलब अपना कर्जा चाहे उठाना पड़े उस माँ बाप को लड़की के पेरेंट्स को वो उनकी इच्छा पूरी करता है तो इसीलिए उसकी हत्या उसके सास ससुराल वालों ने की क्योंकि वो बच्चा ना होने से उनका जो दहेज की पूर्ति थी वो पूरी नहीं हो पाई और दूसरा जो है जो पुलिस का इसके अंदर जो रवैया रहा इस केस के अंदर पुलिस ने भी जो इसके अंदर जो जिस धारा के अंतर्गत तो उनके खिलाफ मुकदमे दर्ज होने चाहिए थे वो भी नहीं किए क्योंकि यहाँ हरियाणा के अंदर ज्यादातर ये भी देखने को मिला है पुलिस जो है ज्यादातर लड़कियों के पक्ष में उनका नकारात्मक रूप होता है और वो ऐसे केसों में कोशिश ये करती है कि केसों को दबाया जाए हम जो पुलिस वालों की जहाँ तक सोच का सवाल है उसमें ये है कि ये वो ये सोचते हैं कि घर की जो ये मैटर है ये घर के अंदर का मैटर है इसको सॉल्व हो जाना चाहिए उसमें चाहे वो कहीं तक रेट वगैरह लगाते रहते हैं लेकिन फिर बाद में उसमें जाके अचानक ही कोई रेस्पोंडेंट कुछ गलत कर देता है तो फिर उसका वो उसमें हम पुलिस को नहीं कह सकते लेकिन वो थोड़ा सा हम उसको साइकोलॉजी को समझने वाली बात होती है इसमें पुलिस का ऐसा कुछ नहीं है वो तो अपने उसी हिसाब से चलते हैं जैसे पहले जमाने में चलता था कि ये तुम्हारा फैमिली का मैटर है आप इसको सॉर्ट आउट कर लीजिएगा उसके लिए डेट वगैरह दे देते हैं statistics will show crimes have been going down if you if we really see we have been taking for granted certain things as not to be crime a husband in a fit of rage actually slapping a wife is not crime if you actually go to report that to a police station the policeman will be like karelo chakra hai let it go we've seen a karnataka high court judge actually putting 500 rupees to this in front of the victim and saying go and have a dose my so dosa with your husband and sort things out a husband meeting a wife is perfectly normal if we are to take these as normal see we can surely say that crime rates are going to go down there's nothing wrong with that what happens when you gather up your courage in both hands and go to the cop station first they'll say oh jurisdiction then they'll tell you you know is that to shebi court jana padega आप क्यों करना चाहते हो ऐसे रफा दफा करो देर स्लैप द गाय अराउंड फ्यू टाइम्स दे कैच ऑन द फिल्म दे वर नॉट लॉजिंग अ फायर देयर आर टू और थ्री रीजंस फॉर नॉट लॉजिंग अ फायर वन इज दैट इट्स वर्क फॉर देम टू इज दैट टिपिकली देयर आर इंस्ट्रक्शंस फ्रॉम द टॉप टू कीप द क्राइम रेट लो सो व्हेन द टॉप कॉप विल टर्न अराउंड एंड से ओह बट वी हैड अ 90% रिडक्शन इन क्राइम्स इट्स नॉट अ रिडक्शन इन क्राइम इट्स अ रिडक्शन इन रिपोर्टेज and word over research has shown that when crime reporting increases crime actually goes down if the number of crimes increases the police the officer in charge of the police station or that area gets a negative mark so tries to keep the number of the crimes as low as he can even if you know i deny and you don't agree to my denial and still presume that it is so let me tell you The severe most offences cannot be burnt. You can burn a DZ. You can't burn a murder. If you go to report a crime to police, police must register a crime. No business to say you do it on your own and come back if you don't succeed. What nonsense! It's time you go back to the jantar mantras 
and the grounds to say, we want this police reform. If I go there, my crime must be registered. And if he doesn't register, the man must lose his job. It should be a cognizable crime. He should be getting arrested now. In fact, the method of assessment should not be such that the competence of the person or the police officer would be assessed by the numbers of the crimes reported. It should be judged by the number of the crimes reported and solved. You can turn around and say we'll put more women cops in cop stations. I'm sorry, women cops are more sensitive, necessarily. Have you ever had to deal with women cops or have any of you ever dealt with women cops earlier? It's not a given that they're gender sensitive. Sometimes they can be worse than men. So just putting women cops out there does not mean that you're being gender sensitive. Women cops can be very nasty as I know from personal experience. I think uh, women felt that they had put up for it for a long time. That coupled with the sort of uh, we give a damn attitude that initially came from the from the police and a uh, very smug response from the Home Secretary and the Police Commission at their news conference. Uh, uh, I think I heard the more. We don't need sensitive people, we need professional people. Sensitizing, sensitizing, there's so much of talk going on. This is my personal take that no, we don't need sensitive police officers. He should know this is the SOP. If a person comes, you have to handle it like this, standardized. This is your professional response to a situation. Solution lies in stricter laws, stricter implementation of laws, and exemplary punishments, and education in long run. Women and girls should also observe some code of conduct, life of self discipline for themselves and they should also take some precautions. <coughs> this I explained. Very recently the Commission of Police issued guidelines. They are only advisory, not mandatory, they are not law. The police commissioner said that when the girls go to schools or colleges from their homes, they should first return to their home and then go anywhere else. One. Second, they should always keep their parents informed where they are. Now some of the women organizations have opposed it. And I have put a question to myself and to those honorable ladies. What's wrong in it the police advising the girls? They tell their parents at home that they are going to school or college. And when something happens, it is found that they were 20 kilometers away from their school or college. I think that these are all done and they made, they dressed up as a security measure. Whereas they are not, they are all part of that same Lakshman Rekha agenda. And sometimes you have to recognize that the agenda of restricting women's freedom and the agenda of the rapist are actually the same. They are both trying to put fear into you and trying to tell you that you have to act according to that fear. If you don't, if you don't, then you deserved it, you asked for it. All that the Indian woman is asking for is to be free of the fear of being hurt because she's a woman. She won't share the blame anymore. She will fight. Fight against subjugation. Fight for justice. The legislative mechanisms have to work in. The political leadership has to be made aligned to the fact that rather than closing into their doors and uh, rather than bamboozling popular protests, it's time for them to be part of the protest and time for them to amend the laws so as to give proper, effective remedy and justice to the affected persons. We need to collectively do this together, right? And break the conspiracy of silence, as I keep saying, that, you know, oh, this, let's move on. We shouldn't move on. There is no question of us moving on. All I can say is do not give up now. It's now or never. Now or never.